When we think of the Wizarding World, the beautiful sight of Hogwarts Castle immediately comes to mind for most of us. Or the busy, exciting atmosphere of Diagon Alley definitely gives me a nostalgic feeling. But there's another scene that really hits home for me, and you can see that it does the same for Harry. And that's the first shot of the Hogwarts Express. What a moment for all first years to witness as they come through the magical barrier. The Hogwarts Express is something that I believe can be slightly overlooked in comparison to the other magical wonders. And in today's video I really want to do it justice by explaining the train's complete history, how it came into production and why it's so important. So if you want to learn everything there is to know about the Hogwarts Express, then please stick around, grab yourself a butterbeer and enjoy today's video. Okay everyone, let's get started. So the Hogwarts Express is probably the most exciting train ever created, mostly because of the destination that it's taking you to. Believe it or not, Hogwarts students did not have the benefit of the train for the better part of 800 years. Some used port keys, some broomsticks, although it was extremely difficult to carry trunks on a broomstick, some even rode magical creatures in addition to other unregulated forms of travel and it actually became a big issue trying to get the students to the ground safely year after year. Now that all changed in the year 1827 when newly appointed Minister of Magic Ottiline Gamble decided to make a change by looking into muggle forms of transportation. Now here's the issue. While muggle transportation is more practical, there were some who believed it to be an insult to the wizarding race for their community to adapt something that muggles invented into their society. Most wizards believed themselves to be superior to muggles, so to use something they hadn't invented themselves would be considered outrageous. Regardless of such protests, the minister concluded that the best, most practical method of travel was through steam locomotive. Therefore, the minister then commissioned a muggle train company to build the locomotive for the school and in 1830, the train was ready and its track was also completed. Also in the same year, 1830, the Minister for Magic conducted a large scale operation involving 167 memory charms, as well as the biggest concealment charm ever performed in Britain in order to acquire the locomotive. The morning after this operation, the residents of Hogsmeade awoke to find the gleaming red Hogwarts Express and a Hogsmeade railway station that had not been there previously, while the Muggle railway employees and crew had the feeling that they misplaced something, something big, like a train, and that stayed with them for the rest of the year. After the train's construction, there was once again initial resistance from pureblood families against using a muggle-built device for wizard transportation, which, like before when the idea was first proposed, they claimed it was unsafe, insanitary and demeaning to the wizarding race. Until the ministry decreed that students would arrive to the school on the train or not attend at all. The train initially ran on steam for a short period until it was re-engineered to run on magic. This helped preserve the train for so many years as its components wouldn't wear down. The steam that comes from the engine is apparently a result from being charmed to do so. The passenger carriages hold compartments which set off a corridor, allowing each compartment to function as a self-contained stage within the larger train. Prefects of the school ride in a separate carriage near the front of the train and the compartments also appeared to be lettered. So let's talk about the actual train from the movies for a brief moment. Believe it or not, the Hogwarts Express wasn't built just for the film. It was actually a real decommissioned train named Alton Hall. The train made its first run in 1937 before it was officially retired in 1964. Alton Hall remained out of use for 34 years until it returned to steam in 1998 after being restored for the Harry Potter movies, which I find very interesting. Anyway, let's continue. So the Hogwarts Express only has two destinations, Kings Cross Station and Hogsmeade Station. Hogsmeade Station is located near the Black Lake and from there a road extends around the lake to Hogwarts Castle. 
It is actually quite the distance from the village itself, being on the opposite side of the Hogwarts grounds. The Hogwarts Express stops here after travelling from King's Cross Station's platform 9 and 3 quarters, which muggles cannot penetrate. At the station is a small group of buildings, the large being a resting place for the conductor of the train. It's also noteworthy to mention that a special clearing was made in the Forbidden Forest that leads up to the school grounds from Hogsmeade Station. The forest is extremely dangerous to all, so all precautions were taken while making the clearing. Also, at the end of the platform, boats are docked awaiting the arrival of groundskeeper Rubius Hagrid and the first years. Now, back at King's Cross, the train docks at platform 9 and 3 quarters as I previously mentioned, but let's talk a little bit more about it. The platform is accessed through a magical barrier, you've guessed it, located between platforms 9 and 10. Now, although it was Ottilie and Gamble's idea for the creation of the Hogwarts Express, it was actually one of her later successors after Rodolphus Lestrange and Hortensia Milford, a woman named Evangeline Orpington, who created the concept of a magically concealed platform to eradicate any risk of students being seen boarding the train elsewhere. Now, while the solution proved a good one, there have always been minor issues, such as young witches and wizards who have dropped suitcases full of spell books or else cases of children passing through the solid barrier a little too loudly. Therefore, to prevent any serious breaches of the International Statute of Wizarding Secrecy, there is usually a number of plain clothed Ministry of Magic employees on hand at the station to deal with any inconvenient Mughal memories that may need altering. The platform is only used six times a year, round trips to and from Hogwarts for the start of and end of term, and also Christmas and Easter holidays. Other than that, the platform basically appears deserted. The train departs at 11am sharp to the students waving goodbye to their parents and family members stood on the platform. As far as recent times, the Hogwarts Express still makes its six trips a year to and from Hogwarts, and there are no plans to replace the train or even offer another form of transportation. Because it makes such a small amount of trips, along with the assistance of magic, the train has easily been preserved for over 175 years. It is also the longest running locomotive of all time, and I can't see that record ever being broken. As I said at the beginning of the video, the visual of the train really hits home and it's definitely one of the things many new students look forward to after being accepted to Hogwarts. What I find completely ironic is the pure and half-blood students based in the wizarding world would be less comfortable on the train than Muggleborns as trains are basically non-existent in the magical world while used every day in the Muggle world. Now, for those of you who are not aware, Platform 9 and 3 quarters isn't the only magical based platform. There is another. Platform 7 and a half is home to the Orient Express, another magical train that offers long distance travel to wizarding villages across Europe. It is for magical adults only and doesn't run too often, but at least you're aware there's more than one train in the wizarding world, and more than one platform too. Anyway everyone, with that being said, that is my video on the Hogwarts Express. I really hope you enjoyed it, and my question for you all is this. How many of you, now be honest, how many of you really knew about Platform 7 and a half? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and please remember, be happy. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.